taking a quick break from air suspension because I'm waiting for all the bags to turn up and paint to dry in the box. Um, and I thought, right, I want to sort this rear bumper out. The customer's given me the go-ahead because, excuse the shadows, that's a big shadow of me there. Um, this edge here, it is just all over the place along here. Okay, so you can see how it really ramps up on that end. We don't know what's going on there. As far as I'm aware, these Brooklyn's bumpers, they fit over the top of the original bumper. So when I get hold of this, you can see the original bumper underneath there. And you can see that all of this moves. So from what I've been able to work out, there's a fixing here, which isn't doing anything. There's two fixings up here, which are rusted to fuck. And then there's the mudguard bolted onto the bottom. Now, from what I can see, it looks like it's just these two fixings that hold it on this side and possibly on the other side too. But it looks... Spoiler. It looks very much like... Again, this isn't connected in here. Again, two fixings up there where the mudguard might fix on. Now, quite how you then get it off the car, I don't know. Maybe it just slides down. So we're going to have a go with this. We're going to have a go. Uh, this mudguard is torn as well, so I might have to put a bigger washer behind that to tidy that up for the customer. You see how I put the back end of the sill on just using spy bolts well much the same thing up here so i'm going to get these chaps off worst case scenarios i might just have to grind them off um but i'll get them off and we'll see what is going on with the back bumper because it would be nice to straighten that out wouldn't it it's a bit of an eyesore at the moment now, i don't think the brooklyn's bumper needs to go up any higher which is weird because the standard bumper doesn't actually have that much of a gap between the bumper and the lower tailgate so I, I need to work out what's going on perhaps I'll google the Brooklyn's bumpers it's possible that the bumper here is all down and that's where it should be I don't know yet we'll have a look okay so I used the belt sander to take these bolts off because they weren't playing the game nicely. I could knock the remains through and replace with new. Then on this side, you can see the bumper dropped down quite neatly. On the other side, it didn't because there is a stud here, you can see it, which went through the inner wing. Now that's fallen down, I should be able to remove this bumper, I think. Put you over it. Can you see? I don't know. You can't, you can't. Right, now. So if I go right the way down, got a screw fixing there, which goes onto a bracket which is pot riveted onto the underside of the uh, of the boot lid. Ooh, I can be doing some uh, boot floor repairs on this at some point. Oh dear, bump's not missing over there as well, isn't it? Um, right, okay, distracted. Bumper's what we're doing. So there's one screw there and one screw there. In fact, you can see the bracket more clearly there. So it's like half the bracket is attached onto the bumper. Um, maybe a captive nut. I don't know, it's, it's then attached to the underside. Can you see that? Hopefully you can. Doesn't look too bad. 
Right, let's get those two off. Right, so have those two screws out of the way. I can now hopefully extract bumper right off. Look, there's the original bumper on the top. Right, bumper's off, and I think I can see the problem here. Yes. Um, and one end is twisted completely out of a line with the other and it's a new bumper the, you really have to heat these things up in order to reshape them and for the cost of a new bumper let's just do that uh, I am going to salvage the strip, the running strip and also this metal trim along the top here which I should be able to straighten out otherwise I'll have to order one of those as well um, because that is the strip that stops all the crap coming up from the back here oh that's loose. Perhaps we'll fix that on for you as well, Dennis. Um, stops all the crap coming from up here and hitting the underside of the um, tailgate. While I was down here, I was noticing as well that someone's put sticky tape over the accident damage on the rear quarter, so I'll lob some paint over that. It's actually hidden behind the Brooklyn's bumper, but it does look like it's had a little bit of a tap, doesn't it? And then the customer said to me, Oh, while you're there... Oh, God, that was right. Um... That looks like the lip that the rubber seal sits on rather than um, the top of the cross member. If it's the top of the cross member, next time. Next time. Right, so I need to have a look at that as well. Get Mr. Vacuum Cleaner 8. And you can still see I've got the uh, plastic wheel arch liners in the car still rather than on the car. That's because I've not stone guarded underneath the front because I was waiting until the air suspension had happened but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stone guard it and then the air suspension is going to go on in the next day or two. Look at the dust on it. It's a damn good wash. Damper in vice. Fully extended. If I now push there's that much free play before it does anything. That I'm afraid folks is a well and truly fucked Damper. You can push it in dead easily and it's really hard to pull back out again, but then it goes back in really easily. And then we've got a load of free play in the middle where it will be operating. Yeah, that's not good. We'll replace all four dampers. Right. Okay, uh, so yeah, a little bit of a fuck up on the um on the mirror testing uh for the horizontal movement left and right uh, because I incorrectly said it was a blue plug and it's not it's the blue and the white plug and it's not either of the ports that I suggested it was so let me show you how I work this out if we work on the vertical uh, positioning first of all so we need the ignition on and I go to one of the pins and I'm picking up 11 volts if I move the vertical position up it goes to zero, and if I move it down, it stays at 11 volts. Now, the other one then starts with 11.6 volts. I need to charge this battery up, I know. Move it into the up position, nothing happens. Move it into the down position, it goes to zero. Ah, okay, so then I go to the blue plug. Top wire, well, I'm getting nothing on that. Top wire, getting nothing on that. Well, okay, let's keep going round here. We've got 4.9, 4.4 volts on that. Couldn't tell you what that is, probably the heater. Uh, nothing on that. Oh, 11.6 volts. So we'll go horizontally now. There we go. So that will be the orange and... Can't see it. Orange and pink wire by the looks of things, which I think I said it was orange, didn't I, originally? So the orange and pink wire on the blue connector. So then, because we've only got one that we've got 12 volts to, we know the top two on here are the up and down. So we'll keep working our way around. Zero, zero, oh, 12 volts. Horizontal, zero. Right, and then we've got the white connector, and I think it's the white and pink wire. So white and pink, <laughs> silly ass, um, uh, which corresponds, because the connector has just untangled this. So that on the connector then corresponds to the green wire on this end here. 
So now, if I go armed with this information, if I now go back to my mirror, this is not the customer's mirror, this is my mirror that I've just bought, thinking, ah, mirror's fucked. <laughs> no. Right, so we'll go on one wire, which is connected up to the green wire on the connector on the uh, mirror, and the other wire is connected up to the red wire, which is connected up on the mirror. Oh, well, that works. And then... Right, that works. So, my new mirror works. Let's go and get the old mirror. One of the wires is going to connect, connect it up to the red wire on the blue connector, and the other wire is going to get connected up to the green wire on the white connector. With me? Good. And then we're going to just earth one of them using the power probe. Lovely bit of kit. And we're going to apply power to the other one. No fucking way. It works. Right, we're going to go back the other way now. Well, that's disappointing, isn't it? Right, we have to go back to the door now and check the loom. Silly ass. Okay, so we're at the passenger door. We've got the ignition turned on. Again, power probe. All I'm going to do is shove it in each of the holes. 11.6. 11.6 as expected. This one should be 11.6 as expected. Blue connector, I want this one down here to be 11.6. Ah, 7.2. Right, so we've got a problem with the red and whatever it is wire on the blue connector. So I'll start by checking down on the connectors in the footwell. Then if it's not that, I might have to get the door card off, which would be a pain, wouldn't it? To work out why that is but that's annoying really annoying because i should have figured that out in a better way than that is so this video is here to save you making that save cock up save you some time folks anyway i've got a spare mirror now which is good news and i've learned about door mirrors oh yes well that escalated quickly didn't it right okay so this connector here which is one of the connectors look at the state off this in here this is all water damaged in here um, and also one of the pins has come out so I'm gonna have to disconnect the loom for the door and see what on earth is going on because it looks like it's the door side of that connector that's come apart but then there's a whole load of corrosion inside those connectors um, the wire that's come off I don't believe is anything to do with the uh, windows but we couldn't tell could we I'm pretty sure it should be connected so yeah I'm kind of running out of time today I think and patience with this job so I had to just really just take the under dash panel out which is there um, and the side dash panel out which is here um, and uh, yeah then I can access everything and it looks like uh, the source, the root cause, might be down there, which means I don't have to take the door trim apart. Oh, yes! I've established on the big connector, the big oblong connector. First and foremost, this pin on the end here is very wobbly. It's fucked. It's all corroded and fucked. So I think we'll have to bypass this big connector. And also, you can see inside it, it's very green. Now, if we come out and we look at the opposing end of this, again, all very green. Um... Yeah, I, 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 I can't be arsed to do this tonight. So basically, that blue wire, that white wire there, that pink wall purple wire there, and this purple wire on the end here, the ones that feed the circuit up there, they're the ones that have 12 volts in them, or 11 point whatever volts it was, because the battery needs charging up. But every single one of these connectors in here is horrible. I might have to replace the connector. Um... We'll see. I might have another one of these connectors which I can splice into the loom. But but both ends of that connector are horrible. Um, so both ends really want to be addressed. Yes. Oh, good. I thought I'd put this side together again. Never mind. Right, putting this thing back together again. Uh, I've encountered a couple of issues. First and foremost, the ABS and traction control lights on the dashboard have both been removed. Fantastic. Put them both back in again, cleared the code on the ECU, 
it's working. It's working exactly as it should. So when you turn the ignition on, ABS and traction control lights come on. As soon as the pump has pumped the system up, then the traction control light flicks off. As soon as you go over five miles an hour, the ABS light goes off as well. That's all working. So I need, because I've robbed a couple of bulbs from other positions on the dashboard in order to confirm that there wasn't an issue with that. That's now resolved. So I'm waiting for the bulbs to turn up, which would be nice if they fucking do. Now, the other problem I've got is the all of the window switches were filthy. Uh, these things are actually not that difficult to take apart. Um, you work it out for yourselves because I've done it all and I've cleaned them all up and I've put them back. Perhaps I'll take one apart for you. Anyway, the front windows are working beautifully now, but the back windows are still not working. <clears throat> that was a funny noise, Richard. Are still not working, neither from those switches nor these switches. And I need to diagnose why that is. Both sets of mirrors are now working beautifully. That side was down to the broken wire, as you recall. This side was down to a dodgy connection up here in the little connector that's behind this panel. So as soon as I kind of squeezed it together, manipulated it, lots of contact cleaner, it now works. So we've got everything working apart from the rear windows and the air suspension. See the series within the series about the air suspension. Um, yes, get this lot done and then the car can go back to the customer. Now I missed a target uh, to get the customer car back to the customer purely because I wasn't happy because the air suspension is dropping. You're going to have to see the other series about that as to how I resolve all of the problems because I've tried to compile all of the air suspension stuff into a series within a series uh, which will be running um, alongside this one or maybe just after it. I don't know. I've got so many videos to put live. Um, yes. So once I've got the air suspension reliable then I'll be happy to release the car back. The other thing I have done here, um, there was, like the floor, there was rot to the top edge of the rear cross member under here. There was a load of rot, so I've welded a whole load of, well, cut all the rot out off the top of the cross member and seam welded a whole load of steel back in there. There was another bloody great hole over there, which I've welded up. Um, I need to, cool, that shuts nicely. Um, I need to really uh, underseal next. I'll use a stone guard underneath. Uh, it's all fresh steel under there now. Uh, but in order to do that, I had to take the rear bumper off. As you know, that's all back on again now, and it's lined up better. So we've got less of a gap here. Uh, but now, you got a bloody great load of dirt down here. It's a bit dark, folks, sorry about that. Can you see that? I don't know. And over this side, um, you got a load of dirt along here. You can see where the bumper's been painted. Um, I don't know. It might look fucking awful. But at least the bumper lines up now. Whereas before, there was like a gap there. You could get your dick into. Sorry, get your finger into. I could probably get my dick in there. Anyway. Right. Waiting for bulbs to turn up. And uh, I'll go through this, why this window's not working scenario. Because it's annoying. Very, very, very annoying. Window switches. Right. Now, okay, I know the centre console's all out and everything. I'm about to get that re-varnished. Um, if your front windows are opening and closing, but your back windows are not opening and closing under any circumstances, under any of the switches... Before you go nuts trying to diagnose everything, see if when you are operating a front window switch, open or close, operate one of the rear window switches at the same time. You may find it works. It did on this one. It did work. However, the root cause, because uh, there are relays, there's switches, there's all sorts of others, nice late switch in the middle there. This is a soft dash, obviously, but the hard dash... The circuitry operates in very, very, very similar fashion. One common component that sits between the front windows and the back windows is the uh, single lift ECU. Now, over here to where my heater is. I've turned the big heater off. The big boy's been turned off because it's just too damn noisy. That unit, so that's a PRC9949 
that chappy comes off the hard dash classic Range Rover and it's located in between the seats underneath the box in the center console so you undo four little screws lift the box out and there it is sitting there on top of the transmission tunnel you can access it nice and easily um, and it's literally just sitting there the soft dash unit is this one here that's an AMR 1282 window lift ECU window lift ECU connectors are completely different and this is all part of the joy of the Frankensteining of discos and Range Rovers um, now this bundle of joy here is actually located on that bracket there so you've got to get glove box out you've got to take the panel out underneath I also found that taking the alarm ECU off its bracket gives you a little bit more room because there are three studs that hold this thing in that bastard at the back and two at the front now the bastard at the back is particularly um, trying um, the socket I used to get the nuts off was a 7mm so the 7mm nuts little bastards like that um, we'll see I might not bother putting it back on again um, the back one that is because it was that much of a pain to get to anyway it's off now I'm going to need to work out which one of these joints has failed because there's, there's a dry joint in there it's a really common fault um, on the hard dashes and I've repaired these in the past and these come apart just by pulling the base off dead easy in fact I'll show you what it looks like inside and we'll see if the circuit board looks the same so you can go there you can go there let's have a look so a small screwdriver and literally just behind the box release each one of these clips in my freezing cold do the side one first then no nope. I've had these off before, don't you worry. I don't even know where this one came from. I couldn't tell you. <coughs> right, that bastard comes out. Oh look. <coughs> There's a dry joint looking there. There's a few dry joints over here. So when this all then comes apart, this unit, this PCB, does actually lift out. I'm very careful not to Buller the tracks. This is my unit. Oh, for fuck's sake. If fingers weren't so fucking cold, I would survive this. It's just trying to unclip itself from the front here. In fact, I wonder if I just push on these pins like that. That's an easier way of getting it. There we go. And there we've got the various solenoids on there and the connectors and there'll be something somewhere which will tell you exactly which one has a dry joint on it um, now that was made by Pectron 1991 so I again I don't know where that came from might have come off my old Range Rover but you can see there's a few dryish looking joints around here which are on those resistors couldn't tell you on that one but that's what it looks like on the inside that's the <coughs> early hard dash unit that can go back together again Donk. these come apart a lot more easily so you've got little clips top and bottom off and this should then slide out once that face plate's come off there we are and we are out now I couldn't tell you if one of those joints had gone or not it's a bit more solid statey though isn't it so I couldn't tell you whether it is that that's failed or not is the honest answer 
still made by Pectron. This one was made in 1993. I can't see anything obvious. They normally end up with corrosion on them when you get a dry joint, but then this problem's only just really started. What I might do is pop it back together again, spray some contact cleaner on the connections, and just see if that fixes the problem. But it was interesting to note that on the hard dash and the soft dash, all of the connections for the front and rear windows all go through the same box of tricks, which is this bastard. Now, if I go and plug this chap back in, and put the ignition, actually we won't put the ignition on yet, we'll go and plug it in first and foremost. You can come with me with my new hat on. Thank you, Paul, for the hat. He didn't realise that I was still making videos for YouTube because he hasn't seen one for ages. And there's a reason for that. He's been unsubscribed. What is it that YouTube does that unsubscribes people that have subscribed to the channel? Please check you're still subscribed because the count is not going up. And it damn well should be. Especially with this sort of entertainment, anyway. Right. Oh, my goodness. What will pop you here. I don't know what you're going to be looking at. I'm just going to plug this back in. Uh, two plugs. Dun, dun, dun. That way up. Ah, get in there, you bastard. Now, I didn't take... Although I took... The bracket off when I did the welding on this side I didn't actually take the plug off. Now it's not you can't really see. It's not connected up to the car, but it's just connected into the loom. So I've pushed all the connectors in. Let's go and see if this now works. There's a robin in here somewhere as well. And flying around. Very sociable things. Right. Ignition on. Rear window. Not working. Now, operate front window and rear window at the same time. It's not working again. See so if we can't understand what the problem is with the um, <clears throat> with the window lift. So the top switches are working a treat. Both of them. Grubby window. Rear switches are intermittent. They work sometimes, and then they don't work. And they don't work from there, or. Oh, now see, there it worked. Now it'll work. There we go. So it's an intermittent fault. Now that one's working. And then I turn the ignition off. Count to three. Turn the ignition back on again. Still fucking working. How about that? Um, it's driving up the bloody wall. It's not driving at the bloody wall, it's annoying, purely because um, the problem is actually within the ECU. Fairly confident of that now. Um, the ROM shows you that by bridging, taking the, the eight terminal uh, connector off and bridging the uh, purple slate wire with the white and pink wire, so that's D to E, bridge out just using a little jumpy jumper, uh, then the switches work, then it's going to be ECU. But as you've seen already, I've got that much of an intermittent fault. I couldn't tell you whether it is or it isn't. Right, let's reconnect the battery now. And ignition on and not working. Front windows, fine. Rear window, Oh, now it works. 
<laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Um, there's obviously a dry joint inside the ECU. Um, I'll talk to the customer about whether he wants me to fix that or not. Uh, the problem is that the windows can actually get stuck in the down position if you're not careful. And I've had this with my car, with L95, years and years and years ago. Okie dokie. Right, I've taken the PCB out um, and then used my loop and found a proper rogue terminal on here. I'm going to insert a picture right here of a zoom in uh, macro photo I did using my phone, uh, using my camera on my phone. Uh, and there is one terminal that I think might be causing a problem. It's on that black box there. So I'm going to attempt to resolder um, and see if we resolve the issue. The fact it's intermittent would suggest something like this particular terminal, I think. Anyway, wish me luck. Right, I've warmed the joint up and then just put a blob more solder on the top of it. <clears throat> and, moment of truth. Oh, it's fucking working. But then it was working half the time before. So let's turn the ignition off. <clears throat> I don't want to slam the door because I want the air suspension to stay up. So I can work out if it's leaking. That can happen there. These things, by the way, very, very, very useful. It's a jeweler's loop. That one is a 30 by 36. Take your glasses off and you can use it to see very, very, very close up. Only using that could I then see that one of the joints, one of the soldered joints, are cracked, as you could see in that photograph. Oh, coffee. Cold coffee. Ugh. Is there anything more revolting in the world than cold coffee? I'll go down in a minute. Because I have had enough. Right. Let's see now if we're working. Lights are on. Ignition is in. And why? might just to fix that we'll see where it goes i've not screwed the ecu back into the other dash area but it's obviously back in its box again i didn't want any short outs or anything might have fixed it might have fixed it might just have fixed it right mm -hmm. 